Good morning. Good e- <coughs> Why am I so awkward at introducing videos? I have no idea. Hope your day is off to a good start. Mine is, we're having a productive morning. Just had a delicious breakfast sandwich from Tim Hortons. Fun fact, Tim Hortons is in Buffalo. So that makes me feel at home, Canadian living abroad. In today's video, we're talking all about my Premiere Pro workflow. Oh, that's a fuzzy. Basically how I set my projects up, how I organize them, my whole editing process, all the way to exporting the video. But a lot of these sections I've already actually done in-depth deep dive videos on. So I'll make sure to reference them for you throughout the video. I'll link them in the cards. Huge thanks to Musicbed for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk a little bit more about them later on when we get to picking the music for the edit. For this example, we're gonna be using the edit I did where we made over this office. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it up here. So the key to keeping your project organized is setting it up properly right from the start. So I'm gonna open up Premiere Pro and I'm going to make a new project. This dialog box is gonna come up. I'm going to pick the location in which my project is gonna sit. I organize all my projects based on the format that they're in. So I have a folder for tutorial, folder for the vlog, and within the vlog, there's a bunch of folders per season. This is season five of the vlog. We're gonna put this in the season five folder. And within that folder, every episode has its own folder. So this will be episode 16 office makeover and then all of the files will go in there my titles my reference videos my auto save files all of that goes within that folder let's title the project office makeover vlog very important to be titling your projects when you're going back and referencing them instead of just having episode one two three four five you're going to forget what's in there so make sure you're titling your projects when i'm starting editing i have my effect controls panel up on the left I've got my program window kind of in the center, my little metric color panel on the right. I have my project bin on the bottom left and then my timeline on the bottom kind of middle. The first thing I'm gonna do is just start importing my footage. So I'm just gonna double click in the import window and I'm gonna find my files. I've shot this video particularly on two different cameras. So I'm going to import my A6400 clips in its own folder. And then I'm gonna make a folder for the A7S III clips. And then each day of shooting will be within those files. And then I'm actually just gonna go ahead and make a bunch of bins for all my other stuff. So I have one for music, got one for sound effects, folder for titles, that's where all my graphics are gonna go. And so now we're kind of set up to be bringing assets into the project. I shot over multiple days, so sometimes I'll go ahead and actually write a label in the title of the folder, day one renovation or day one demolition, or just be a little more specific on what's within those folders. Now I haven't done that for this video, but it is helpful to do that when you have a lot of days of shooting. So once I have all my folders set up, I actually go a little bit further and color code my footage. So if I've shot anything in 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, I just filter by frame rate and then I select that frame rate. I tag it as a mango color so I know it's slow motion and then I interpret the footage to 23.976 frames per second and that will slow it down in the timeline. Also, if I have any GoPro footage, I'll usually tag that as green so I know it's GoPro. So I know it has to go above the log direct seven on an adjustment layer when it comes to color grading, which we'll talk about later. Once my folders are organized and we're all set up ready to go, we're gonna to set up our timeline. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can either select the clip that you want to base your timeline settings on, drag that into the timeline window where it says drop media here to create sequence. And that will automatically generate a timeline based on the settings of the clip. You can do it manually by coming down here to this box and come up to sequence and then just check to make sure that all of this is okay. Hit okay and it creates a new sequence for us. You're gonna wanna go ahead and label that new sequence to whatever it is. Cause later if you start having multiple sequences, like when we add the multi-cam sequence, it gets a little bit confusing. So my process for culling through footage might be a little bit different than other people's. But what I like to do is start at the very beginning, the first clips I've shot, I open that up in my source window and I just play through it and find the best parts of the clip that I want to keep, that I want to include in the edit. I'll hit I on my keyboard to set an in point and I'll hit O on my keyboard to set an out point, And then I will hit comma to send that clip, that choice clip, that little tiny portion down into the timeline for use for later. And that way, whatever's in my timeline is just choice clips from all of the footage that I've watched. And it's just a little bit cleaner and easier to manage. I did a full video on my favorite editing keyboard commands. I'll leave the link up here. The in and out one is my favorite, probably most used keyboard command other than the basics. As I'm doing that, I have an idea of what I've shot and what my video is gonna look like. So then once all my choice clips are in the timeline, I'll go all the way back to the beginning of the timeline and watch it through and just be ruthless and start cutting out clips that don't add to the story. Cause at this point I'll kind of know 
what I want the edit to look like. If you want to learn more about how we plan our videos, you can check out this video. I'll link it up here. So now that the story is put together, it's time for my favorite part, which is adding music. And this really brings the edit to life. I keep doing this. I'm like, no. Nah! Huge thanks to Musicbed for sponsoring today's video. Chris and I like to use a lot of chill beats and lo-fi hip hop in our videos. And Musicbed has a really high quality selection of talented emerging artists and composers. We love the artist hammock and we were so pumped to find them on the Musicbed platform and to be able to use them in our videos. Their playlists make it super easy to find the types of music that you're looking for. I really like to explore the drift playlist, the chill hip hop playlist and the chill beats playlist. Musicbed is not a royalty free platform, but you actually get a license for every track you download. So you're hundred percent cleared and legal and they have this custom sync ID technology. So you never lose out on revenue. You're cleared pretty much right away. So if you want to check out some of our favorite tracks, you can check out our playlist on Musicbed in the description box. And if you want to get a free month off an annual personal subscription, you can use our code Becky and Chris at checkout. Thank you so much Musicbed for sponsoring today's video and being a huge supporter of our channel. We appreciate you. So I'm going to add my music track to my timeline. And then I'm just going to start at the beginning of that portion of the edit. I'm going to just start cutting the clips down a little bit to time it a little better to the music. You don't want to cut to the beat every time and have a really predictable edit. So get a little bit creative with the instruments that are in the song. I actually talked about this a little bit more in depth in this video up here. I share some tips on how to edit a cinematic sequence. So I'm just going to play it through, stop, pause, cut the clips. Just make sure that things are timed where I want them and that it flows good. The timing good. You don't want to hold on a clip too long where it's like, okay, that could have been way shorter. So don't want it to be so quick where you're like, wait, what was that? I want to look at it again. Every now and then I'll pick a song before I start shooting. Typically I will pick my music after once I've seen what I've shot. So at this point I'll be really ruthless with my clips. I've already gone through it a couple of times. So now I'm just like really getting rid of stuff that's not necessary. Our project is set up. We've got our choice clips whittled down. We're editing. We've got music in. our sequence is starting to come together. We're ready to go on to color grading. Now, again, that is like a deep dive. I'll link a video up here. If you want to learn how we color grade just briefly, this is kind of how we do it. We shoot all of our videos in S log three. If we're shooting with the Sony a seven S three, otherwise we're shooting with S log two and we're using our own conversion LUTs to convert from log to rec 709. If you want to check those out, I will leave them in the description box. We add three adjustment layers over the clips and we will add our corrections onto those adjustment layers. The middle one holds our custom utility let that converts our log footage to rec 709. The bottom one is where we put our color correction. Usually I'll do this on a clip per clip basis, but sometimes I have a number of clips in the same scene. So it's just easier to make one large adjustment layer instead of individually changing each clip. So the bottom one is where we put our color correction and then we go through each clip and make adjustments. So they all have the proper white balance and exposure and they flow cohesively together. And this is specifically very important when you're switching between cameras. We spend a lot of time making sure that our GoPro footage, our a6400 footage and our a7S3 footage match seamlessly. And then the top adjustment layer that holds our final color grade. And this is what adds that stylized look to our clips. Here's what my finished timeline looks like. You can see the color correction adjustment layer is kind of cut up the log to rec 709 adjustment layer is cut up because I have a couple of different cameras. So I'm using the S log LUT and I'm using the original Becky and Chris LUT. And then one big adjustment layer across the top and that just has our final color grade on it. Anything above that is titles or photos, anything that shouldn't be affected by the color grade. We're basically ready to go. At this point, I've already added in any titles. I actually use Illustrator to do all my titles. I just find it easier and a bit less clunky. I actually made a video about this three, I think it was one of my first tutorials. Process is the same. I'll link it up here. So audio is one of the most important parts of video in, if not the most important part. And we are definitely not experts in audio by any means, but we try to make sure that our audio is intelligible, that you can hear it and that our music tracks aren't too loud. So for simple videos, I'll use the essential sound panel right in premiere. I use the essential sound panel in premiere for the podcast, but for videos that are complex like this, where we have shot over multiple days on different cameras with different mics in different locations, I just find it easier to use audition already made a deep dive video on how we edit in audition, which I'll link up here, but essentially I'll select my timeline. I'll come on up here to edit and scroll all the way down to edit in Adobe audition. I'll click sequence. 
and just hit OK. And that will process and send the entire audio tracks over to Audition. So over in Audition, we've got our file open. You can see all of the different tracks here. We have our dialogue track up top, some sound effects below, and then these green ones down here are our music tracks. So I basically essentially select each one. I use the Essential Sound tab to tag the audio appropriately. And then I start at the beginning of the edit and I go all the way through making sure that all of the dialogue is loud enough to understand and that the music tracks aren't too loud. And then if there's anything that needs to be fixed, do it all manually in Audition because I find it so much easier to do it that way. So we've sent our audio file back to Premiere. So now we have this one big, nice mixed audio file below. So I just go ahead and mute all of the other tracks on the timeline. So it's just playing that one mixed track. And now it's time to export the video. At this point, we've probably been in this edit between 10 and 25 hours, depending on the video. Sometimes it takes much longer than that. Sometimes it takes a little bit less, but I would say on average, I'm spending about 15 to 20 hours on every video that I make, not including the shooting and the planning of the video and not including everything that happens after the export when we're doing larger projects, say like Cold Island or any of the little documentary short films that we've made. Those videos take an extensive amount of time. So moving on to the export. Once we finished our video, we're ready to export. So I'll usually watch my entire video through rendered full quality once before I export it, just to make sure that there are no mistakes, the audio sounds good, the color looks good, and there are no spelling mistakes. So once you're cool with it, it's time to export. So we're going to select our timeline. We're gonna come up and go export media. Uh, the format is gonna be H.264, and the preset is just gonna be match source high quality. Scroll down to bitrate settings. I usually just go VBR one pass um, at target bitrate 60. The file is now like seven gigs, so it is quite large. Could probably go a little bit lower on that. And I'm just gonna come down and go Q. So I always export through Media Encoder so I can still use Premiere while that is exporting. Once the file is open in Media Encoder, I just hit play and let that render out. And it pretty much renders out at real time with my new computer. If there are any like heavy effects on it, like any noise reduction software, that part usually takes a little bit longer. Generally speaking, it's about real time or a little bit less. So the, this video is about 17 minutes long long and this video took about 17 minutes to export. So once the video is done, exported, ready to go, I will toss that up on YouTube. The whole process does take quite a bit of time. By the time you plan your video, shoot your video, edit your video, export it, upload it, put it in the thumbnail, it's a nice few hours of work. And when you're filming yourself renovating a room, it takes even longer. People who say that doing YouTube is easy, don't see the work that goes in behind the scenes. So there you go, that's my entire Premiere Pro editing workflow. We talked about organizing the bin before editing, how to cull footage and send those selects down to the timeline quickly. We talked about the editing process, what we look for when it comes to music, color grading, mixing audio, and then finally we touched on the export of the video. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Hope it gave you a little bit of insight into our workflow and how we make our videos. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any good editing tips or tricks. So, you know, maybe I can learn something or maybe you guys scrolling in the comments can learn something as well. So thanks again to Musicbed for sponsoring today's video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Whatever time of day it is, it's the time of day to watch a video, my video, beckandchris.com slash blog. Try this video with the new Rode wireless go-to mic. I never used one of this before. These, this. Well, hopefully the little road guy worked out. Microphone check. Christmas gifts. Today something happened. Went to Tim Hortons to get a breakfast sandwich, like you do. A little bit late for breakfast, so I got there all day. Had their sausage, egg, and cheese on a croissant breakfast sandwich. Really good. I got two by accident. <laughs> I have one for tomorrow. Tomorrow me is gonna be very happy that today me made a mistake through the Tim Hortons drive-through, but I did not get coffee, which I regret. So I'm gonna go make one. Okay, bye.